guys, welcome to this week's episode where we're back in Kissimmee, Florida. But we're not standing in line at Disney, we're chasing some big old bass. BZ KBF the 10, 2022, get you some. This technique is called sharking. When your buddy starts catching them and you ain't, go over and snuggle up next to him and see what happens. If you keep it up, you end up getting bit. <laughs> oh, it's a giant. That fish might be worth some money. Woo! Welcome to some crazy fishing action here from Kissimmee, Florida. We're here for the DZ KBF the 10, and we're also having some fun. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Fish on. Yeah. Oh, oh, my God. Good night. Look at that tank. That's a toad, brother. Golly. So the DZ KBF the 10 is the culmination of the Angle of the Year standings from the year before where we take the top 10 anglers and bring them to Kissimmee, Florida, put them up in a unbelievable property at Encore Resorts, and they're gonna fish for 10 fish over two days for $10,000. Dink, 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 dink. The 10 house looks like a disaster zone. There's gear strewn everywhere. The guys are rigging and re-rigging. They're all doing research. They're looking at maps. They're powering up their depth finders. They're updating their chips. There's a nervous energy. There's an excitement. And then there's a weird anxiety all kind of rolled into one. And that is what makes the DZ KBF the 10 so awesome. All right guys, so before we jump into the tournament, let's meet this year's Field of Anglers. Garrett Wade. Mobile, Alabama. Woo! Cody Milton, Searcy, Arkansas. Jody Queen, Bluefield, West Virginia. Cayman Rasmussen, Coleville, Utah. Jason Broach, Bluffton, South Carolina. Woo. Russ Snyders, Nashville, Tennessee. Matthew Scotch, Weatherford, Texas. Jimmy McClurkin, Silver Point, Tennessee. Mike Elsie, Mooresville, Indiana. Josh Stewart, Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Cody Henley, oh, yeah. Oakley, Utah. Toad! And this year's Rogue Fishing Rookie of the Year, Brandon Bissell, Marquette, Michigan. The rules and the format for the 10 are pretty simple. It's catch, photo, release. The anglers catch the fish, photograph them, and release them. They count their top five fish each day for a 10 fish total to decide who takes home the crown of DZ KBF the 10 champion. It's a big. And by fish, I mean bass, because you can catch a lot of fish in Kissimmee, but largemouth are the only ones that count. Oh, I caught a pickerel. So one of the unique storylines that we have at this event for the first time is we have three former champions that are vying to be the first time ever KBF DZ the 10 champion twice. So Jody Queen is the reigning champion. Cody Milton has won the event in the past. Russ Snyders has won the event in the past. All three of these guys are fishing really well, finished the season strong, and are coming into the event with a lot of momentum. Now, I'll tell you this, there's a whole bunch of other guys here that are dead set on keeping that from happening. So one of the changes that we made for this year's format was we got each of the anglers to outfit themselves with cameras, and that presents both unique opportunities to capture footage and some unique footage that we capture. GoPro stop recording. 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 Good morning, good morning world. So here we are. It is day one. We are four minutes away from official lines in. So we got that nervous shake going. We're ready to roll. Let's see what today holds. All right, it's go time. Oh my gosh, what a start. A minute and a half in, baby. That's the way to start the DZ the 10. Okay, okay. So let's take a quick look at the current KBF Challenge Series Angle of the Year, Mr. Garrett Wade, to see how his fishing is going so far. Fish number one, baby. Fish number two, it ain't very big, but 13 inches will help. Fish number three, 13 and a half. Fish number four, 
All right, one more, and then we need to do some serious upgrading because that is not gonna make me any money. <laughs> that fish might be worth some money. You know what time it is? It's time for I got five fish snack. Tournament rules, you can't eat until you have a limit. So Garrett was one of the first anglers to catch a limit and jumped out to an early lead. Another angler that jumped out with an hey. early limit was Jimmy McClurkin from Tennessee. Yeah, keeper number three, 18 inches. But immediately after catching his limit, he also missed a potential upgrade. Oh. You know what, guys? We can pick the dates, and we can pick the lakes. We can pick the location. We can pick everything. The one thing we can't pick is the weather. And the weather is always that unknown variable, and the cold fronts coming in are gonna make this absolutely championship fishing conditions. If you don't like fish in action, you should change the channel right now and flip over to Golden Girls, Wheel of Fortune, or Jeopardy, or something like that, because fashion seatbelts, this one's gonna be a good one. Hey guys, I'm Chad Hoover with Kayak Bass Fishing. If you're looking to get in on the exciting sport of kayak fishing yourself, check out kayakbassfishing.com. Yeah! Boom! Oh, yes! What a freaking toad. So whether you want to find out more about competitive kayak fishing and kayak fishing tournaments, or just looking to learn more to make yourself a better angler, head over to kayakbassfishing.com and join today. You know, guys, I can stand here and tell you about how awesome the fishing is in Kissimmee, Florida, but it'd be better if I just let the anglers from the DZ KBF to 10 show you. Oh, just keep fishing. Yeah! Get your flip out of here, boy! So one unique option that we have for making it into the 10 is an event we call the 10 Invitational. If you win the 10 Invitational, which is another two-day tournament, then you'll win your way into the 10. So Jason Broach, he came down, laid the smack down on the competition, and made it in to the 10 house. Jason Broach goes about fishing like it's another day at the office, because for him it is. As a biologist, he works with fish every day but when he's out there on the water it's really more like he's at the library than the office there are very few anglers in this sport that i can wrap up and explain in one word but cody henley is not one of those anglers because i can't explain him in one word unique she'll do boys she'll do day one day one of the day he was power, power fishing. He was fishing faster than most people would have even thought would have been effective in the conditions that we had. But because he was finding success, he was really just doubling down on that pattern and continued to catch fish. But the other thing he did a really good job of is immersing himself in the environment. That included talking to birds. Hey, hey, shut the flip up. Oh my gosh, that is so loud. And guys, not only is he catching a lot of fish, but he's also catching big fish. Let's check out this upgrade that Cody Henley just caught. Ding, oh, that's an upgrade. So during the time that the tin is going down, it's a little bit bittersweet for me because I'm watching these anglers go out and catch some monster fish on some of the best lakes in the country, and I can't fish them. The beautiful thing about the Kissimmee area is there's plenty of options for me to go elsewhere and find a place to still catch some fish. So one of the first anglers that I ran into is a good friend of mine and YouTube star Gene the Fluke Master Jensen. Now, Gene spends most days teaching the world to fish through his channel, but over the past couple of years, he's really gotten hooked on competitive kayak fishing. That's a good fish, bro. So Gene's goal coming down to Florida was to win the 10 Invitational and make his way into the 10 house. But Jason Broach had other ideas. So Gene and I were left just fishing for fun. So how about that for the first fish of the day at 20 and three quarters? A flipping stud. <laughs> Time to let him go though. All right, there we go. Oh yeah. Bruh. That fish is 18 and a half on the old catch board. Nice and thick. I think I'm gonna drop the power pole and kind of work through here a little bit. 
Because when it comes to shallow water fishing in a kayak, one of my favorite tools is the micro anchor from Power Pole. It's when you got this light wind at your back and you're trying to sight cast into these pockets, you can just pull your Power Pole up, drift forward a few feet, put it back down, you're working all new water. The wind starts to blow your tail around, you just drop your Power Pole down a little bit. It'll get a little bite, straighten you right back out. Oh yeah! I don't deserve to be in the tent house because I didn't qualify like these guys did. But with the quality of fish that I'm catching right now, I felt like I could give these guys a run for their money. So I've mentioned that there's a lot of veterans at this event, but there's no veteran with more tenure at the DZ KBF to 10 than Josh Stewart. Oh, it's a giant. Oh, it's a freaking giant. So all anglers show different levels of excitement and some internalize their emotions. One of those anglers is Josh Stewart. In fact, even with five minutes to go when he catches a significant upgrade, he still doesn't show a lot of excitement. And maybe that's why the dog was more excited than he was. Hey, All right, guys, that's gonna do it for day one of the DZ KBF to 10. Let's take a look at the Lead Lenser leaderboard. Day two always has a different energy about it. The anglers have a different level of intensity. They've had one day on the water. They know what's worked and what's not worked. They've gone home and they've spent a long, anxious night thinking about it. So there's just a whole different level of every emotion. So this year for the second time, we had a rookie make it into the DZ KBF to 10. And that rookie was Brandon Bissell. But I can tell you this, even though he was a rookie, it was obvious once he started fishing that he wasn't new to competition and definitely wasn't new to catching fish. I'm sitting in, I believe, third place going into day two of the 10. Yesterday went a lot better than expected. I uh, found a pot of fish and wore them out for the first couple hours. I'm hoping for a repeat today. I'm gonna head right back to the same spot, uh, hopefully snatch up a quick limit and then go big fish hunting. I think I'm about three, three and a half inches back. So we're gonna need a big one today if we're gonna make up that ground. You wanna talk about an endorphin rush? <laughs> Let's go get it. All right, Gene, so it's day two of the 10 and they're catching them already. This morning at 7.07, .07, there was fish being loaded. At 7.30, there was seven fish. At 7.45, there was 15 fish. Yep. It's kind of tense in the house last night, don't you think? Oh man, you played the worst trick I've ever seen played. What he did is he shut the leaderboard off. Two hours before the end of the event, Good I plan. told him I was gonna turn it on at seven. And at seven, they said, hey man, the leaderboard's not on. I said, seven a.m. All night long, they had no idea where they stood. There was a lot of changes. In fact, there was one guy that wasn't even on the leaderboard when it went off jumped up into second place, and that's the former KBF national champion, Mike Elsie. Oh my goodness, what a day. Mm, let's go. I am a nervous wreck, to be honest with you right now, because I am sitting in second place just by a little bit. I'm gambling, I'm going for broke. I want to win this thing, and so I'm on a different lake. So after having a great day one, Mike Elsie decided to make an audible and swing for the fences. It. The problem is sometimes oh. when you swing for the fences, you strike out. I've had one bite all day. I've been all over this dang lake and uh, nothing's happened. All of these anglers come into the event with a lot of extra pressure on themselves, and they also have the bar set pretty high. But when you're fishing a catch photo release tournament, you never know which fish are gonna count. And one angler that holds himself to a super high standard is Matthew Scotch. But I'm not sure it was a great idea to throw away measurable fish when you never know if one of those fish could make the difference in the outcome of the event. So when you come to Florida, you're gonna fish vegetation. The key to success though, is figuring out which vegetation is gonna be the most productive in those given circumstances. In some cases, it's Kissimmee grass. In many cases, and especially in the case of the conditions we had for this week in Kissimmee, it turns out it was the lily pads. You know, one of the things that I always try to be mindful of is how much noise I make on the water to let the other fish know that I'm there. Well, Cody Henley threw caution to the wind because every time he caught a fish, everybody and everything knew it. There she is, boys. There she is. Woo! 
Cody is on an absolute tear, but the rest of the field is starting to catch him now that the wind's picked up. We'll be right back with more kayak bass fishing action and to find out who's gonna take on the title of DZ KBF to 10 champion. I'm Chad Hoover with Kayak Bass Fishing. If you're looking to get in on the exciting sport of kayak fishing yourself, check out kayakbassfishing.com. Yeah! Boom! Oh, yes! What a freaking toad. So whether you want to find out more about competitive kayak fishing and kayak fishing tournaments, or just looking to learn more to make yourself a better angler, head over to kayakbassfishing.com and join today. All right, guys, so welcome back. Listen, before we crown a champion, let's take a look at some of the amazing fishing action down here in Kissimmee, Florida from all of the competitors in this year's event. At Kayak Bass Fishing, or KBF, we have a core business principle that's actually based off the word core. It stands for community, opportunity, recognition, and education. And so the 10 event was designed to be that event that provides both opportunity for anglers and recognition of their accomplishments and their skill sets. So KBF is uniquely positioned to be able to provide that platform and we're honored to be able to bring these opportunities to anglers across the country and for it to culminate in such an amazing event. We're so proud at KBF to be able to bring that to the ding, fishing ding, community. Ding, 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 ding. So while the competitors kick off day two of the DZ KBF to 10, I'm hooking up with my good buddy Gene Jensen to do what we do best, look for new waters and new bass. I think right now because the lake is so low that there's not a lot of depth positioning these fish. So it's more of a wind and bait thing. Oh, that's a good fish. That's a really good fish. Oh, come on, buddy. Come on over here. Getting a little sunshine and getting a little bowed up action, man. God, you gotta love it. All right, guys, so let me show you what I caught that fish on. I'm using a Shimano Corrado DC, but this is the 6-2 uh, to 1. Allows me to hold my rod tip up, reel that thing a little bit slower, and keep it in the strike zone longer. Uh, when they get a little bit more active, I'll go up to the 7-5 or the 8-1, 8-2. I'll, I'll go a little bit faster. But for right now, in this colder water, uh, I'm throwing a, a Z-Man jackhammer. I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for this, especially from the Z-Man enthusiast, but I really like the Yamamoto Zako as the trailer over the Z-Man stuff. And um, Green Pumpkin on Green Pumpkin, just because this water's darker and I want it to contrast really well. And the reason for that is there's a lot of brim in here. And as these fish start to feed up for the spawn and as they start to establish their area, the brim is literally public enemy number one. So a combination of a bait that's gonna contrast better and show up in that darker water uh, and something that the bass just naturally hate and they actually chomp the heck out of it. You ready for my pro tip? All right, so I got a pro tip for you. This technique is called sharking. When your buddy starts catching them and you ain't, go over and snuggle up next to him and see what happens. You know why you call it sharking? Because if you keep it up, you end up getting bit. <laughs> so one guy that walked into the tin house as a perennial favorite is Russ Snyders. Russ is one of only two anglers to win Angler of the Year title two times and only lost it this time by the closest margin in KBF Angler of the Year history. Oh, about gave me a damn heart attack. Russ Snyders was one of the guys that everybody was picking to win this event. So Superman goes from Clark Kent to Superman and back again by simply putting on or taking off a pair of glasses. For Russ Snyders, that's a man bun or ponytail or whatever the people with hair call it. Bam. I think competition is just a, a natural part of the human existence. The adrenaline rush that comes from catching a fish that though it would be super significant if you caught it out of competition, a really big fish just takes on a whole nother level of significance when you caught it inside the confines yeah. of a tournament. The heartbreak of losing a fish oh, no. is 10 times more amplified oh because God. there's so much at stake. No. No. The hardware and getting that recognition from your fellow anglers is cool, but really what it boils down to is I think internally most people are just competing with themselves to be the best that they can possibly be. Woo! All right guys, so we made a quick move because Cody Henley has jumped back into the lead and when we showed up to where he launched, he is the only truck in the parking lot. 
So we're going to jump out on the water, see if we can't catch up with Cody and see if he's able to bring home the title of the DZ KBF the 10 champion. Woo! That's a keeper. 18.75, pulled out a 16. She'll do. All right, guys, the smoke has cleared, the dust has settled, the fishing's over. So all that's left to do now is crown a champion. Let's head over to Fish and Chaos and take a look at the DZ KBF the 10 final standings. So guys, not only is the 10 house an amazing experience for the anglers that are here, but it's also an opportunity for you to make it to the 10 house. So head over to kayakbassfishing.com, click on the schedule, find a trail event, sign up for the state challenge series, and you too could end up fishing in this house. So congratulations to this year's champion, Mr. Cody Henley. Thanks for watching this episode of the DZ KBF the 10. I gotta give a big shout out to the folks from Experience Kissimmee and Encore Resorts at Reunion for making this event possible.